Welcome back, strategic angling fans. I believe this is episode 20. That was our 20th episode of the show. Uh, thank you again to K&K, True Value, and Bed North Iowa for putting this show on. Uh, my name is Brady Hanna, and I will be the only one. Uh, I know you're used to potentially two or three if you've watched a lot of these, but you just got me tonight, and um, I want to talk with you a little bit about something that um, you know the other two don't. I at least haven't seen them used quite as much as I do and that is um, a swimming worm. So uh, JJ uses them a little bit, Chuck does too, but you know, so I, I like to go to a swimming worm um, a lot of the time, uh, actually. And the reason I do that is because it's, it's a very versatile bait. I usually try to have one tied on because, you know, if, if you think the fish are eating moving baits, but you know, swim jigs, swim bait, you know, your first couple options aren't working. This is kind of my finesse moving bait presentation it's a little bit less action you know smaller profile usually in the water and uh you know it still imitates a lot of different different things so they're great to swim obviously they're called swimming worms but you know another thing that people overlook them for is you know they you can flip them they flip great uh, nice little tail kick at, as they fall um if i think fish are eating stuff on the fall but they're schooled up and i want to try to stay off them a little bit you know, I'll throw a swimming worm out there. Um, it's also a really uh, nice bait to use, uh, dragging bottom. So it can be very, very versatile. I usually try to keep one tied on. And there's a number of, uh, you know, areas that a swimming worm excels in. But this is probably another one of those, you know, grass or weedy type offerings that uh, that's when they're probably most effective is in those kind of conditions, you know. A really good post spawn bait for sure. Uh, you can work these really slow, uh, but still get again cover water with that moving bait bite. Um, so grassy, you know. And then you talk about how do you rig these? Well, um, there's a couple different ways, and there's a couple different hooks that I use uh, to rig up a swimming worm. If I want to go, if I think it's just going to be a truly swim scenario you know i'm not going to flip it i'm just casting reeling casting reeling i'm probably going to go with something like a screw lock as an option um you know this is a gamakatsu i don't know exactly the model number but it's about a five aught screw lock no weight on it but this way you get awesome hookup ratio on your swimming worm by using the screw lock so there's really nothing in the way um, of your hook set you know big nice gap just like you would with like a soft plastic weightless swim bait. So really great hookup ratio on just the swimming action. If the water's a little dirtier, um, or I wanna add a little weight to my presentation as well, and it's dirty, um, I'll go to the, this is called a flashy swimmer. Uh, it's basically got an underspin on it, you know, a little bit more subtle action, but it's again, you know, that same style, um, big gap type hook, what people normally would use you know these on a, a swim bait for so works great on a swimming worm as well and then the last option i use in this one i'll go to if i want to make sure i get the worm on the bottom or it's really windy and i just you know need something that's going to fight that wind when i cast i'll go to an ewg uh, more of a texas rigged approach with a weight in front rather than going with you know a belly weight or a, a no weight option you know the hookup ratio not quite as good but this hook, in my opinion, is a little bit better if you're gonna work bottom, if you're gonna flip. Um, it just, it's just a little bit better option because of the way you can seat the weight on there. You know, the hookup ratio is still gonna be very good. I typically use a three or four aught uh, Gamakatsu Superline hook for this, um, just depending on the size of the worm. So, so that's how you kind of rig these. I wanna talk next about what are some different options in the swimming worm space. You know, it seems like everybody's got, you know, an option on a swimming worm now. There's a few I've got on the table that I find myself using more than others. Uh, the first one I want to start out with is the Big Bite, you know, uh, Tour Worm. It's it's one that I'll call my finessiest option. It's got a very small body, but nice little kick to it. I would use this with my lightest hook offering. You know, if, if fish are really pressured or, you know, you're really trying to go finesse, but still cover some water by swimming it. Um, and so that's the tour swim. Another popular one is the rage tail cutter worm. Uh, this, this has just got a single kind of kick to it back and forth. 
Uh, you know, you detach a little flange on there. And this is another really good all around bait. Uh, probably the most popular of the swimming room options, I think, is maybe the cutter worm, or it's one of the. Uh, I really like these. You know, they make them in a number of different sizes. This is the big one. Uh, they've also got, you know, smaller ones, but. Uh, yeah, cutter worm, good, good option if you want to swim, drag, do whatever. Uh, next one that's probably equally as popular is the Ultra Vibe Speed Worm. This one has a nice little ribbon tail, or not ribbon tail, it's like the cut tail um, at the back. It's, it's a, and again, make this in smaller sizes, and uh, it's, you know, these are cheaper. You get quite a few per pack. You know, again, try these, just like we've been saying in all these different episodes. Try the different baits, see which ones you like. Um, in regard to how you like the kick, which ones the fish react to. Um, I got into this kind of swimming worm thing you know, years ago when we took some guided trips down to Florida. Uh, that was a great way to work a grass flat. And I've been kind of hooked on swimming worms ever since just because of the versatility and, you know, it's a great cast and wide option. So uh, colors, you know, same kind of approach here as we've talked about in the past uh, with the colors. I try to go natural colored and you know the swimming worm for me is I'll use the green pumpkins or the green pumpkin blues or the black and blue. One I really like is June bug. Um, definitely a Florida, popular Florida option but we're not in Florida but it still works great up here. It's something a little bit different from green pumpkin and black and blue is the June bug. You know I have bought some of the shad kind of mimicking swimming worms but I find myself not using them as much. I definitely like the natural colors. Um, Let's talk about, you know, what kind of rod we're throwing this swimming worm on. You know, for me, the lightest I probably go with the swimming worm is like a 734, a 7 foot 3, you know, medium heavy, kind of on the, on the heavier end of medium heavy. Um, you know, it's, it's a, it, you got to drive a hook set no matter what hook you use. It's not an exposed hook deal. And usually, you know, fish will hit it and run towards you, so you got to catch up and, you know, get them with a good set. Or if they take it and really run, you know, again, you want a quick, you want a quick, strong um, hook set on these with a strong hook. At least that's what I've always had success with. Um, but probably the perfect rod would be, you know, more towards that five power. So on the Dobbins lineup, for example, uh, the 735 is a very good option. I threw this quite a bit this year, also on the 755 Ecstasy. But that's a whole nother conversation. But the 735 Dobbins Champion XP. Very good option um, for these swimming worms. I use the same kind of speed reel I would on a swim jig. If you're an eight speed guy, I'd probably go with an eight speed. I prefer, you know, sevens for my swim jig. I just seem to have a better uh, swimming cadence with that. So I'll go, usually I'll go seven speed unless, you know, fish are eating really weird or I'm gonna flip this primarily and maybe then I'll bump up to an eight. Um, I don't find myself really using a six. Six speed hardly ever. Um, you know, as far as areas that still to throw these swimming worms, you know, places with, with grass, places with soft, crappy bottom, you know, places you want to keep a bait up off the bottom, but still kind of have an offer a different presentation. This is a really good option, um, especially on the river. It's like I said, it's a great way to cover water, um, but still kind of offer a, a different look, a more free, finessey presentation. So today was a short episode you just got me. We we'll should be back to full strength. I know I keep promising some on water stuff. Um, haven't found the time to do it yet. I might roll a clip here of some of the footage from last week's Lost Grove League where Chuck and JJ actually were, 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 were come out on top. They won again. Um, we tried to film that. Unfortunately, Justin and I stunk it up and didn't get great footage. And we had some technical difficulties with uh, Chuck and JJ's boat. Trying to have five cameras going is, is not the easiest thing. So hopefully I got some footage I can show you here. Another bed right here. Kind of weird they spawn on the point. Yeah, that's a bed right there. Yep. Oh, whoa, 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 good one on it too. There's a good fish on it, dude. Yeah, Chuck. Where did it go? I can see the tail. Move your rod. We're going by. Is that it? Or, yeah, it was a fish. I saw the tail. I can see him. He's right to the right side of that little. 
Was that the fit spot? I should have grabbed my Banco. I can't, we're too far past it now. Yeah, might as well. Hand me that Senko. Oh, there, no wonder. Yeah, back up just a hair, Juju. That was a big fish. I think, I can't remember where the hole is at, though. I can't tell if it's this spot. Yeah. You should have just put the. No, we weren't there. Yeah, we're veered off too far. I can't see in there now. He was drawing right on the bottom. I can see him. His tail was that wide. You won't be able to see him. But he's got it. There he goes. Get the net. Tell me you got it. Dude. I knew it was a good one. <laughs> I knew it was a good one. Oh. Really? Mm -hmm. I'll be. I'll be. Fish? That's going to keep. It's pretty sad we're netting these. Yes. <laughs> yeah. A five miles a limit today. FLW Pro Scott Martin. We're so good. We suck bad. We suck Chopra. Can I get my cameraman over here? Are you ready for the shot? That's a big limit if I've ever seen one, son. Get him out of here. Get him out of my sight. We got a fish that we think might be big. Watch this thing be in 12 inches. I'm not okay. Come on. Might get him out, get him on the board quickly. He ain't helping. Come on, this fish needs to cooperate. We got like a minute left.
<laughs> oh my god, there it is. <laughs> I'm glad I came back for him. God. There's no way that was the fish. It looked way bigger than that. Right? We'll catch you next week. We might be changing to a new date in the next couple weeks. Um, we're thinking probably earlier in the week, maybe Tuesday. It seems like we got some feedback that Fridays, you know, people will kind of forget about watching this is the weekend and maybe you miss miss a week so hopefully we're gonna move a little earlier in the week we really appreciate you guys watching again you can find all these products uh down at can k true value in bend north iowa give a swimming worm a try you'll be pleasantly surprised in my opinion with the results um if you're looking for another option to offer other than you know swim bait swim jig swim anything so give a swimming worm a try it's very versatile you won't be disappointed and we'll catch you next week on another episode of strategic angling